Hi, and welcome to another episode of Tom Ray's Art Podcast. I'm Tom. On today's show, I meet an author. But the thing is, is I meet an author who tells me a story how they became an author because of mediation. And they became a mediator because they're a ballroom dancer. It's a weird thing where I, I knew going in what types of books they had made and... I didn't know that background. So that was kind of a surprise, but I'm not talking to someone who just is an author of mediation. They decided to make a children's book. And that's something that I think all of us have thought like I could make a children's book or I'd like to make a children's book. So it's always interesting when I get the chance to meet someone who made a children's book, but made one because uh, they just thought of it. It's not even what they do. It's not even what they had been making. So it's cool to see the process of, how they went about just thinking of the idea and then uh, shipping it to people or shopping it to people and finding an illustrator and then creating the book. And now it's out. And that's what we're here to talk about is that journey of uh, deciding to make a children's book. And uh, it's a fun conversation, a very nice person. And here is the interview starting right now. My name is Leora Panez. I am a professional mediator and author. Professional mediator. Now, uh, okay. Mm -hmm. First of all, just because, you know, uh, us humans, uh, when we're reading things, and especially so quickly on the internet, we kind of just assume what the word is by the time we get to the end of it. I thought it said (laughs) meditator. Uh, (laughs) So what is a, what is a mediator? (laughs) Sometimes I like to pretend that I am a professional meditator. Okay. And like, it a little bit, but I won't for the sake of this moment. Um, (laughs) So a mediator is essentially somebody who helps people in conflict um, in and out of the courtroom, in and out of the legal system. It can be a case that's already in litigation or just a conflict between neighbors or friends, business partners, romantic relationships. And we help get to resolution if that's what the parties want. Okay. And so, and this is for uh, law-based Things because I didn't know if it was like, uh, I mean, I want to say some businesses have mediators between, well, I oh, guess that still involves, involves law. Yeah. Okay. It's everything though. It's everything though. I, I mean, I do a lot of work with just couples in any form of relationship. That I figured. Okay. Friends, and they're just having a problem communicating with one another. You know, okay. like I keep telling him X, Y, and Z, but it's not getting through. And that the other person says, well, he keeps telling me. A, B, and C, but you know, so so a lot of times people have a hard time expressing what they're actually trying to say. So we do a lot of work in reframing. Okay. So the intent is coming across properly. That's one example of what we would do in mediation. Okay, and, and we're going to get to your book in a second. This is just so fascinating oh. that I I need yeah. to I, w- I want to ask a few questions that have oh, yeah. entered my mind. So it, how how do you get into something like this? It's I it, I yeah. mean, do you need a law background for it? Like, or how are yeah. you? Yeah, why why would you be a mediator? That seems you know what I mean. Like, what? <laughs> how did you head down this path? I'm picking up what you're putting down. Don't worry. <laughs> Okay, well, that leads to the other thing I do. So I've been a professional competitive ballroom dancer, basically. Wait a minute, what? (laughs) I know. (laughs) So not you say that like, and the obvious choice would be this leads to the other. (laughs) Let's start with that. Okay, competitive ballroom dancer. Go ahead. Yes, and um, teacher, coach, choreographer, and when I really started transitioning to coaching a lot. I realized I was spending the majority of my time helping to diffuse conflicts amongst the member, uh, the teammates, um, okay. the partnership. Really. There, sometimes there are more than two if it's if it's like a team performance or something like that. But in a dance partnership of two people, what matters is how it looks on the floor. Uh-huh. So if you can imagine being in a marriage with someone you hate, uh-huh. but you really need to stay together because the product is so good. Okay. How can how can we get along? How can we remain? Uh, you know, in this relationship for the sake of the professional career. So I was spending quite a bit of time working these partnerships through disputes. And I realized it was something I had a knack for. I developed the skills and then I developed a business separate from dancing to do just this. Then I found a a program in school and I went through it and I kept on doing it. That's funny too, because that's even a a great metaphor for what it is. That's, (laughs) that's interesting. Okay. Yes. I talk a lot about the tango 
the tango of mediation, the tango of conflicts, and then that sort of rolled over to my writing style as well. So it's been a theme throughout my life. All right. So how did you get started as a writer? Great question. Thank you. <laughs> in different, in, yeah. <laughs> in, <laughs> and it's such an off-topic question. Um, <laughs> I've been writing in, in one way or another my whole life. When I was little, I liked storytelling and you know, all kinds of different things. And then when I was in college, I did a lot of editing and helping people write their papers. Uh, and then for, for my book in particular, the nonfiction book, I coming out of the program I was in, I was doing a lot of helping other people understand certain concepts better and just talking about it more and more and doing it more. And a professor colleague of mine said, you know, you should write a book. Mm -hmm. So I did. And that was the, that's more of the mediation type of Yes, books. that's inside the mind of a mediator, strategic conflict intervention. So I wrote it for everybody. My publisher for that book is a legal textbook publisher and they're fantastic. I'm, I'm really honored to be picked up by them, but I did write it for everyone. So I didn't use legalese. I made sure that while I was teaching these very high level skills, it would be approachable and understood by anyone at any level from any walk of life. Because, you know, as we know, these skills make everyone's lives better. No yeah. Matter what. All day, every day. Now, when did that take the leap into the book that you just had come out recently? Now you've <laughs> written a children's book. Yes, I have a children's book <laughs> called Miss Lenny the Librarian. Because again, just like time. ballroom dancing to mediation, you know, that <laughs> you write you write a book that helps people not in legalese, then children's book about a young yeah. librarian. <laughs> I mean, naturally. Yeah, um, it, it all just. <laughs> The Zen diagrams are all over the place on this one. All right. Zen, um, wait, did I say Zen diagram? I meant Ven, whatever, whatever it is. I'm going with it. Yeah, I'm it works. It. Uh, so anyway, um, tell me, children's book. <laughs> yes. I had an author event yesterday and someone said to me, oh, something for kids and something for their parents. Mm -hmm. like, exactly. Um, <laughs> I had both of my books there. But yeah, so I have it in English and Spanish right now. The Spanish version is called Miss, uh, Miss Lenny La Bibliotecaria. And that one really came about organically. Um, I had inspiration all around me. And when I graduated my, um, my last program, I was overseas in Buenos Aires, Argentina. Okay. And I was with my mom walking around the streets and I wrote the book on my phone. Oh. And I edited it and worked on it on the way home on the plane and kept going from there. Okay. So it, just, it, it just happened. <laughs> All right. All right. So you mm -hmm. started writing it on your phone. Uh, yep. I mean, what was the inspiration really? So I get walking around and you started writing it, but really it's like you went, you know what? I'm going to write a children's book. And the thing is, is I know a lot of people out there have all had the idea to yes. write a children's book. So, yes. and I'd like to know how you made that a thing, how you made that go. I mean, you did it. So <laughs> yeah. how, how did it go? How did it end up on your phone? And how did you decide that this was really going to be the way that I pursue it? Yes. Um, so like I said, I have inspiration from certain people around me my whole life. So uh -huh. it's sort of been in the back of my mind for a long time. And it just made me laugh. Like all of these different people I wrapped up in the book and different events just I had this sort of like, you know, conversation in my head for many, many years. You know, regular things certain people do are just funny. Yeah. It's just funny watching this person get in the car and like zip down the street. It's just funny watching this person fumble to answer their phone. You know, certain normal events that are just funnier when certain people do them. Yeah. Uh, that's what was happening. And, and also I come from a multicultural family. I come from a family that encourages representation and standing up for people and doing the right thing and all these different things. And I wanted to really get that message out there in a powerful way because I, I believe in doing that. I believe when you have a strong voice, you should do something with it. And so I wanted to incorporate um, a lot of these concepts into my books. Okay. And you were going originally with your previous book through mm -hmm. a publisher that did law books. Yes. Now that's the other thing is while you were doing this, were you planning on self publishing it? Were you uh, shipping it out to people? Like how did it come? Cause you also, I mean, you have physical copies of the book. It's not just you're creating an ebook or uh, is it an on demand book? Like how did you go about finding, uh, how did you go about shopping it? Let me put it that way. <laughs> 
Um, yeah, yeah, I did not want to self-publish. I wanted to have the backing of publishers behind me, if possible, of course. You know, I, I, it's just such a difficult business. It's so hard. There's so many fantastic writers with great ideas. Uh, yeah. So I just sort of started listening a little bit, doing a little bit of research on different publishers. I didn't know much about it before I started. Okay. And then for my... Um, mediation well, i'll call it a mediation book but really it's just a large umbrella of different types of skills that yeah. i teach in this book and one place you can put them is as a mediator towards mediation um and for that book i i pitched the idea mm -hmm. and then you know move forward in the pro give us 10 pages give us the first chapter yeah so yeah, there are no chapters or anything in a children's book that's that, that's no, why that's harder Right. The children's book was different. The children's book I had finished when I sent it into a publisher and I just sent it in cold. Okay. I mean, both of these were, were, were cold calls, so to speak. <laughs> All right. And how did you decide on uh, which person to send it to? Uh, so how much research did you do? Yeah. Yeah, I did. I did quite a bit of research. I wanted to know who who are the heavy hitters, what kind of supports out there, what other types of books are these publishers representing? Mm -hmm. Also, you know, who, who am I going to be surrounded by? So I looked into that a lot. I asked some people around me. I didn't have a huge pool to draw from, but I did kind of ask one person. And then do you know anybody? Do you know anyone? You know, kind of followed that rabbit hole as far as I could until I found somebody who knew somebody <laughs> who said this was a good one. Yeah. And and I sent it in and, and, you know, you get, you get a lot of information also from actually talking to the publishers. So mm -hmm. we did a little bit of an interview process back and forth. And I was just really, really impressed by the books both publishers represent. Okay. All right. Yeah. And when you were writing it, were you only writing it or did you also search for artists to do the illustrations? Did you do the illustrations? How did that come about? Cause that's the other thing is children's books right. also need people to draw them. That's right. That's and, right. And, and now all of a sudden, book. yeah, you, all of a sudden you're, you're collaborating. You're not just creating a book. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. Surprise. That was a little bit surprising to me. And it also <laughs> changes the way you write the book right? Oh. when there are no illustrations. Yeah. So this was something interesting to me when there are no illustrations and for my textbook or, you know, my other book, my nonfiction book, yeah. I'm explaining in a huge amount of detail, every single thing I'm saying, but with my children's book, I, I did the same thing, of course, because that's what I thought to do. But they explained to me that we want to remove some of that to allow children and whomever else is reading it to experience that on their own, to come up with their own versions of some of these things, to make that little leap themselves. So that was part of the editing process for me, removing a lot of that. But uh, my publisher actually made the partnership okay. between the illustrator and, and me. And who is the illustrator? Her name is Catherine Suvarova. Okay. I was I was wondering where you have the book. <laughs> you can... Oh yeah, I have the book. I have the Spanish version as well. <laughs> and is that hardcover? Yes, it is. I have hardcover and softcover. Okay, and and I'm assuming. I mean, of course, the publisher probably takes care of where it gets printed. But where does it get printed? Do you know? Publisher land. Okay, I mean, good. In the in I, the I, clouds I, somewhere. Yeah, <laughs> I allow that to remain outside of my pay grade. Okay. Now, so the, this is the part that fascinates me, uh, with, cause I've, I, through the show, I have, uh, I have begun to meet a lot of writers and it's funny when you were talking about like, yeah, it's very competitive. Uh, once I started meeting these writers, you know, and of course we become friends on the different platforms and I'll follow them, but then it will also, I'll get suggestions of, you may also like this and I'll see other writers. So I see a lot more writers in my feed and Personally, and I don't know if it's just because it's not my forte, but I'm looking at it going, yeah, this is crazy competitive the way people are with all the things they're doing and yeah. all, all that kind of stuff. But the adding an illustrator on top of it is the thing that fascinates me. So when uh, you said it was, it, it changed the, the style of what you were writing, um, were there many illustrators that you went through first or was it really just like, we think you'll like this person and you were like, okay, let's do this. And you just sort of worked from there. Yeah. And um, even, even less than that, actually, I, when, once I submitted my book, once we signed on with one another, contracts were signed. Um, we moved forward with a little bit of storyboarding, you know, okay. they kind of made in about certain, of course I sent in an edited version, you know, mm -hmm. editing is like 
so editing all the time, but once they got involved, they made certain recommendations from their perspective, you know, their expertise. And um, they said, okay, so we have an illustrator in mind. We'll move forward with that one. They sent me a couple of images to approve and I did, loved it right away. And then the next thing I heard from them was my book completely done. That was it? That was, you, you just <laughs> you just sit at home and collect these checks now? Is that what you're telling me? <laughs> well, it went from panic every single day. Why haven't I heard? What's going on? Why That's haven't I heard? Huh. Yeah, to, um, to now where I'm really, you know, working pretty hard to get the book out there, doing a lot of events. Just came from one yesterday. We're going to be at the LA Festival of Books, April 22nd and 23rd. Okay. Really excited about that. You know, a lot of um, grassroots efforts to just, push out the book. And it's, it's amazing to think about it in the hands of, of strangers, uh, you know, all over the place. So, yeah. so that's been really, really exciting. And, and it drops worldwide April 16th. Okay. So at that point, you know, I'll sit around thinking about how it's internationally known. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So, yeah. so, so what is, let's say, okay, if you were to create, well, I mean, not if you, I mean, when you create another book, let's get, cause I know that yeah. you wrote this children's book, uh, on your phone mm -hmm. while, you know, an idea that you had. So you're starting the new project. Yeah. What would you say is the process for when you start a project, whether it be a children's book or if you're going to write, uh, another, um, uh, Fictional, non-fictional, non-fictional book. Yeah. I always have to check yeah. to make sure which one I'm saying because um, right. non-fictional <laughs> book or regardless, any type of book that you're yeah. doing, like what's the process for when you start a project uh, to sit down and actually make it? Yeah, um, so the process, okay, it's different. It's di it's def for, for me anyway, okay, I speak for myself only. It's definitely different depending on the type of book I'm writing. So for my non-fiction book, I, for me, the best time, to be the most creative is the middle of the night. Okay. That's my thing. Okay. I actually kind of <laughs> agree with that. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Middle of the night, no one in the world is awake, except for some places, but I don't think about that. Mm. Um, and I stand in the middle, middle of my hallway. I have two very long, plain white walls. And I stand there with stickies in my hand. <clears throat> and I just sort of walk up and down, you know, I'm a physical person, my dance background, and I walk up and down and I, I'll feel the walls and just kind of close my eyes and visualize a tornado of concepts around me and just feeling what a book would feel like and chapters feel like and the weight of the words and all of these different things. And I'll put a sticky on the wall mm -hmm. and just write down something, a word, a phrase, something I think should be included in the book and I'll let it branch out from there and okay. I'll move forward with it. So if it's a chapter book, I might consider <clears throat> starting with, you know, the titles of the chapters or the topics of the chapters and I'll space them out and then, you know, sort of begin in a circular small space and move out from there with additional ideas that I'll just put on the wall because having that visual representation going from nothing to colorful stickies and note cards and things all over the walls really makes you feel like all of a sudden you have a lot of stuff and then feel, filling them in is less painful. Right. If I have a topic, I can write a couple sentences. Mm -hmm. I can write a paragraph. I can write a little bit and I'll jump to this one and I'll move around. I will not only stay in one chapter or in one topic. I'll, I'll move around and completely let my ideas flow. So I'll do that. And that's kind of the process for that one. For my children's book, um, like I said, I just really wanted to move forward with this idea I had, you know, this thing that made me laugh. I wanted to push yeah. it out there. I had a very strong image of this main character. Um, I wanted to include these messages, these things that were important to me. I wanted to speak with a specific tone. I felt like wasn't being represented enough. Um, I wanted to empower kids to let them know that just because you're a kid or you feel young or less than you're not mm -hmm. kids can do everything anyone else can do too. Um, and be respected for it. And uh, that kind of, I think, was the engine for me to really be able to put it on paper. It was really powerful. Okay. And how long would you say it takes you uh, for either of these sorts of projects? Like, what's, what's an average time span for you to create a book? <laughs> I'm <an> <laughs> <laughs> it's a, it's okay, a tougher place generally what's to. what's <laughs> I guess I'm not asking I'm for doing, a specific I'm tap dancing. Yeah. I'm tap dancing. You just can't tell. Uh, <laughs> and that's because in the publishing world there are certain deadlines that you may want to uh, work within. Yeah. Let's just say. 
Okay. So I, I worked at a particular pace for my nonfiction book that I wouldn't necessarily recommend. Uh, I worked on a 24 hour clock. Really? So there was no, there was no night and day. Yeah. I worked 24 hours a day, just slept a little bit when I was tired and I, I really wanted to push it out. I was riding a wave of, um, information intensity yeah. and like th this, this pressure to be able to help a lot of people to really understand this topic. I think it's so critically important. And I was dealing with it all the time, you know, facing people who really needed a lot of help. So I really wanted to push it out. So that one I turned over um, quickly in, in less than, in less than a year, in, in a number of months, less than a year. Okay. <laughs> um, for, yeah. <laughs> um, and, and it's long, you know, that's not necessarily something you would do because it's just a, a physically difficult pace to upkeep. But for my children's book, um, yeah, you know, I, I was able to get it out rather quickly. I mean, over the course of a few months. And then I let it sit and I edited and I ended up going back in later and adding different elements and doing different things. As you go through the writing process, things evolve. Okay. You become better acquainted with your own characters and your own stories and your own thoughts. And so you have a tendency to go in and change and you know shift a little bit or add a little bit more, take away, like I mentioned with the illustrations, that was a later edit. Um, I ran it by friends who have kids and I got their input, you know, Oh, I, I think you should do, well, what about this? Oh, okay. You know, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so those were a number of different edits. Yeah. So that process, you know, took, took a few months as well. Okay. And do you plan on doing this as a series or is this a one-off and you plan on doing another one in a different way or is this the only one? Yeah. Like what are the plans for this thing? Well, for the children's book, I will just say you'll have to stay tuned. Okay. <laughs> Fine. <laughs> yes. And for my nonfiction book, yes, I do plan on. So it, like I said, it's, it's a hefty book. I think it's about 450 pages. Okay. Um, and I mean, there's just so much to talk about. What am I going to make it? 10,000 pages? No, nobody would read that. Right. So there, there will be additional versions of it. And I will add other topics that really deserve many pages. So I will do more of that and I will begin to take on other projects. And I'm also thinking about creating different versions of the same book. Um, you know, something that people can throw in their back pocket or throw in their bag. Or if you are a mediator, you can have it on the table next to you in some sort of condensed version, something like that. Okay. And you mentioned before that you're uh, with the releases you're doing and there are things tied to the releases. Like, how are you uh, showing your stuff publicly? How are you getting the word out there? Mm -hmm. Yeah, definitely. Uh, and by the way, let me say, I will take any suggestions for sort of just <laughs> jumping into the world of social media. It's such a powerhouse unto itself. Yeah. Um, you know, it's, it's, it's a whole beast. But I have social media for Miss Linny the Librarian, Instagram, TikTok, putting up lots of videos, trying to connect with as many people as possible, mm -hmm. um, going out, doing author events, book signings, which are so fun and so cute, <laughs> and encouraging people to send in videos to me, reading the book, send in reviews, pretty pretty much anything that's out there. I'm what are the book into. events that you go to like? I'm curious, I don't know if I've ever been, well, I mean, I guess not in quite some time, especially one for children's books. Um, right. Yeah, so what are, the, what are those? How, how are you setting those up and what are they like? Yeah, so um, I came back from the Tucson Festival of Books not long ago. My publisher had a booth there, and they brought a few of their authors. So we were there signing and discussing the books, and they had all of their books. It, it was really great. And there, it was on the, um, I think it was the University of Arizona, Arizona University. It was on the campus. Oh, okay. It was an enormous event. Yeah, all kinds of different books and musicians and dancers and all kinds of things. It was really, really great. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and then yesterday I was at a bookstore in Woodland Hills, California, and they set me up with a space at a great table. I had a whole area and I had posters and flyers and books and all kinds of things. And, and this was all through the publisher? Off. No, no. The one yesterday, just we connected with one another. Oh, okay. The it's a really great bookstore called The Open Book. Yeah. And they love um, encouraging authors and having them come in and talking to people and signings. It's, it's a really great supportive space. So that's nice. what we did there. And in a couple more weeks, we'll be at the LA Festival of Books yeah. on um, USC's campus, University of Southern California. So really excited about that. You know, it's all about getting the, getting the word out, really talking to people. Yeah. And what's been fun is I have a lot of kids coming up to me asking me about being a writer. So that's oh, nice. like the very cool thing. They want to be writers. Okay. Yeah, yeah. So that's been really fun. <laughs> so what, what do yeah. you tell them? I'm, I'm curious. How, yeah, what's, uh, what's the discussion that you have with these kids? 
yeah, so I had a great conversation with a gentleman yesterday. Uh, I think he's 12 or almost 12. <laughs> and he was asking me for some help because he has too many ideas, all of these ideas, and he wasn't sure what to do with them. So I asked him, are they different, all different ideas? Or is it one idea that keeps changing? And he said, it's one idea that keeps changing. And I said, well, that's great. That's called editing. You're going to do that a million times anyway. <laughs> so, so get it out. I think a lot of people struggle with the connection between what's in my head and getting it on paper. Oh yeah. Really, I, I, I can agree that with that. Yeah. Really, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I have that conversation quite a bit. So I say, you know, do it anyway, force yourself to get it out. Um, when I, my whole life, my mom has always told me, um, get it out in a stream of consciousness way. When you first start, it doesn't matter what it is, just get it on paper. I have come to find out that that becomes a more painful process for me to go back in and edit and, and fix. And I feel like I'm doing double the work. So I have moved into this visual, physical space where I put everything on the walls around me, mm -hmm. like I mentioned before, and I'm able to tailor it as I go. So I recommended that to him as well. You know, stand in front of a wall and put things on it. You can move it around, do all kinds of different things. And so he's going to try it out and let me know. Okay. Nice. Mm -hmm. I like, I like that you gave him a task. <laughs> I know. <laughs> it was very, it was very nice. He was responsive to it and he's, he's, he's probably doing it right now. <laughs> yeah, maybe. And yeah. now I, uh, with you having the, uh, I mean, we saw the book that you had before the physical ones and uh, are you also putting it out as an ebook? Um, so my inside the mind of a mediator is an ebook already. Okay. I, I'm not totally sure the direction of the children's book. Once it comes out after April 16th, I'm sure we'll have more conversations about it. Um, I, I think so, but you know, I'll get back to you on that. Okay. Right. Um, I also, I also want to make sure to have audio books. Like oh, I mentioned nice. before. Um, yeah. I really want everyone to be able to see themselves in my books, have access to my books. I already have it in more than one language. We'll be moving on that front as well. So that's really, really important to me. So I want to cover all those bases. All right. And with, uh, with the books, where are they be like, how are they being sold? Do you have your own, first of all, do you also have your own website that you sell them at? I don't have my own website yet. I'm going to be putting that together. I just not had a chance to <laughs> have right. had a couple of things going on. You can't on, just yeah. get a website going. Come on. No, I'm right. kidding. Yeah, of course. No, no, it's a difficult thing. Websites. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. So I, I will put together an author website. So I am able to sell Personally, I have my books and I can sell them when I go to these events if I want to. Um, up in, well, My publisher, you can get them on their website, both publishers. Okay. The books are available through the website. So for my children's book, it's called um, Storybook Genius Publishing. That's the uh, publisher for that one. And for Inside the Mind of a Mediator, it's Aspen Publishing, formerly Walters Kluwer. So the books are sold on their website. Um, Inside the Mind is available everywhere online. And after April 16th, the children's book will be as well. So okay. lots of different places to get it. And yeah, definitely going to move forward with the author website. I think just more access is better. Yeah. Do you, do you make uh, I know you do have a, a website that's connected to your, uh, as we were referring to it, the mediator book. Uh, did you make that yourself? Did you have someone do it for you? Like how, how did you get that one up? Well, I'll take that as a compliment because that obviously means it looks professional enough to be made by someone else. Okay. Thank you very much. Yeah. <laughs> Well, there's also <laughs> all the info that goes thing. into it as well. Like that's right. the thing is right. it's, it's one thing to make a website. The other part that's really yeah. hard is it's like, oh, I got to put stuff on it. Like that's, that's oh. also, there's a, there's a whole second part to making the website. Yes. <laughs> it is very hard. Let me say very hard. Yeah. So the website I have right now my, is for my mediation firm. It's okay. called SCI Mediation, which stands for Strategic Conflict Intervention. So there's a connection to the book, which is Inside the Mind of a Mediator, Strategic Conflict Intervention. Yeah. And on that website, I post a ton of information about mediation in a very understandable, short way, just so people can really see that there's no downside to mediation. You can use it in every single circumstance you're having a problem with, you know, mm -hmm. and, um, and tools there to help as well. So everyone can contact me through that website also. I don't have anything about the children's book up yet. I wasn't sure if I should do that. I wanted to. Well, and I, that's what I was wondering about too, because I know you've made <laughs> yeah. an entirely separate uh, Instagram yeah. account for the children's book, which uh, yes. th that's one of those things I always 
contemplate, but I'm like, I don't know yeah. if I would really, especially with the different things that I have. It's like, if I really had a separate site or a separate account for every single thing I did, uh, on yeah. social media, it's just like, I'm always switching around, but also yeah. it's like people follow you for one thing. And then it'll be like, well, why do you keep posting this on here? I followed you for this. It's always a constant struggle for me. But uh, so yeah. I, I found that interesting that you had that for the children's book, which truthfully I think makes sense. Because one day you'll be posting about mediation and the next day it's like, here's, here's an illustration of, of a child you know, <laughs> in a book. I don't know. Yeah. So that yeah. one makes sense. But for, yeah. Yeah. Uh, and that's, yeah, I did separate there. Yeah. It, it, so making the, making the separate website for that, I, that makes sense as well. But again, that takes the time to put that up and all that kind of stuff. So. Yeah. yeah. Every, everything takes a lot of time. And it's really interesting that you're saying that because I, I did go back and forth in my head about what should go where and how. And when I made the decision to have the Instagram and the TikTok specifically for Miss Linny, the book, I, I, it was really a good separation for me because I think the people who are interested in, in that book really can stay in that sphere. And if they're interested in me, they'll find me and they can learn about my other stuff. Mm -hmm. You know, I wanted to, I wanted to, to uh, draw that line there. I think that, I think that works because like you said, I mean, everything in every place, it's just too much. And it be can become a little bit unappealing. And also I want to remain authentic. Right. So, you know, I'll publish things on certain days and I'll talk about certain things that make sense and that are relevant to the people who are interested in that. Mm -hmm. and, and like I said, if they want to know about me, they can move over into other areas. Yeah. And so uh, what projects or things coming up in the future do you have that you'd like to tell people about uh, it, with any of the things that you're doing or do you have new projects that you're doing like what it, tell me what's in the future for you yeah well there there will be some dance competitions coming up at some point <laughs> okay um, <laughs> uh, yeah so so with Miss Lenny we'll be doing more and more events the only next one for sure I have is the LA Festival of Books and we're going to be right in front of the bookstore at USC if anybody wants to come and see us okay right now from 12 to 2 p.m eastern time maybe a little longer um and as I commit to more events I'll be posting them on definitely Miss Linny social media and probably my personal social media as well. Right. Um, and for Inside the Mind, I'm doing a lot of guest lecturing and I do trainings and I do mediations as well. So when uh, additional versions of the book will come out or any additions to the one I have now, I'm not sure yet, but I will definitely be posting everything to let everyone know. Okay. And uh, I was yeah. really glad that I got the chance to meet you today. Thank you so much for coming on the show. Yeah, thank you so much for having me.